Hey, welcome to Standing in Faith. This is our episode on Yahweh Shalom, God, my peace. My name is Kat. I'm in the studio with Jeff. Here I am. Rochelle. Hi. And David. Hey. And when we think about Shalom, the word itself, most people think of it as it means peace, but it's far more than that. Um, it means wholeness, wellness, well-being, safe, happy, friendly, favor, completeness, to make peace, peace offering, secure, to prosper, to be victorious, to be content, tranquil, quiet, and restful. The pictographic symbols of the word shalom, if you don't know what the pictograph means, the, the actual Hebrew um, words shin lamid vav mem read destroy the authority that binds to chaos the noun shalom is derived from <clears throat> is derived from the verbal root shalom shalom sorry which means to restore in the sense of replacing or providing what is needed in order to make someone or something whole and complete so shalom is used to describe those of us who have been provided all that is needed to be whole and complete and break off all authority that would attempt to bind us to chaos. I Pretty. love that. Yeah. Isn't that good? I love it. I love like just the destruction of that authority, that controlling authority that connects us with chaos. In Judges 6... The whole chapter is just this phenomenal story. It's where Gideon is first called uh, by God. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter because it's a lot of verses, but it's wonderful. But right after Gideon was first called and then he realized it was the Lord that was there, he's just like, oh, like, I'm going to die, you know, because I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, peace, do not be afraid. You're not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it stands in Orpha of the Abirazites. That same night, the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height. Using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So they did it in the night because he was afraid of the whole townspeople. They tore down the, the false idols, you know, the, the altars to those false gods. And in the morning, the townspeople woke up. They're like, whoa, where's the altar to Baal? Where's the Asherah pole? Where, you know, where's all this stuff? And they talked to Gideon's dad. They're like, bring him out so we can kill him. He's got to die, you know, because he just cut down all this stuff. He's like destroyed all this stuff. And, uh, of course, Gideon's dad is like, you know, what, you know, are you going to plead Baal's cause? Are you going to try to save him? And then uh, he was like, if Baal really is a god, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. So I, I love that because God was like, okay, first off, destroy all this false god worship paraphernalia. Break down. Yeah, destroy, break down. Terminate. Mm -hmm. Break. Yeah. Versus the opposite, which is peace is peace is restoration mm -hmm. and wholeness. Yeah. I love these play on words in the scriptures. Yeah. They're, they're showing you the opposites. Yeah. Yeah, and of course the word would have been Yehovah Shalom, the name that Gideon gave the place. Yeah. Yeah. When I think of peace, I often think of Psalm 23, right? I see green pastures and still waters and you know he makes us to lie down there's rest so that's kind of a a graphical pictorial image that i get of peace it's lush it's safe it's sound you can rest in this place it's not a a burden it's actually a blessing um so that's what i whenever i think of Hearing the word shalom, that's kind of the first place my my mind and my imagination head to is what's that like and just being in that. Um, so that, that 
that's interesting. Um, the other thing is, um, in in Jesus' fulfillment of this, right? That's from Colossians one twenty, where it says, "And by Him, capitalized, representing Jesus, to reconcile all things to Himself, by Him, whether things on the earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood." of his cross, his capitalized being Jesus again. So Jesus made that peace possible for us. Mm -hmm. But even more amazing to me is in John 14, where Jesus is talking about two things that are interrelated. He talks about the necessity of leaving us a helper. In other words, the Holy Spirit. Mm Mm-hmm. And then in the same breath, he says, my peace, I leave you. So it's almost as if the Holy Spirit is that deposit of peace to help us. And and when you start to look at the definition, right, the, the, the crushing, right, the breaking of the authority of chaos, yeah. and then all those other... Mm-hmm blessings that peace brings to you, wholeness and well-being and, I mean, that whole long list, um, isn't it a cool idea to think of that's like, that's the Holy Spirit? Yeah. All those things that you read are are deposited into us, mm-hmm. right, as Jesus leaving us his peace and leaving us the helper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he would have used shalom with them, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it references in Revelation there'll be a time where the Holy Spirit is removed and the spirit of peace is removed with it. Mm. Uh, The chaos will be allowed to take over. That's fascinating. Um, Another thing that I was thinking is when I hear the word shalom, I think of all my Jewish friends that they say it all the time, but they don't necessarily, and it would become every day, oh, shalom, shalom. It's just how you say hello. When I say hello to you, it might not be that impactful in terms of what the word encompasses, but in Israel it's very common to walk whether you are a Jew boo who's Jewish Buddhist, if you're atheist, if you're secular, whatever you are, you still walk around saying shalom, shalom. It comes with the annotation of blessing. Um, so people who don't even know they're blessing each other are blessing each other by the power of that word. Um, I also think of the the, the city, Yerushalayim. Um, the roots of Jerusalem is to be a city of peace, mm-hmm. a city of safe, Salem, you know, mm-hmm. It's a place of wholeness and restoration and a place where you're now finally restored. So I think of the Garden of Eden, that that shalom was happening, and then the first time God says something's not good is to see man not alone, so he brings him a helper. That there's this shalom that happens with the spirit of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of holiness, mm-hmm. Ruach HaKodesh. The spirit of holiness is the spirit of peace that, that restores and brings calm but we always think of calm in English as like a lack of movement. And I, I, I've come to see that I think that the way the Holy Spirit moves is also with fire and power. And there is lots of energy that can be within peace. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, I hear people say, I don't know if I ever want to go to heaven because it sounds so boring and like there's nothing going on and people are singing, wearing white robes. I don't think that's the, the true Jerusalem. I don't think it's just a city of nothing and lack of chaos. It's a lack of destruction. Mm-hmm. It's a lack of chaos that leads to death. Um, what do you guys think about destruction versus peace that is not necessarily just still? Yeah, I, I think that's that's right on because if peace destroys what connects us with chaos then there would be a movement with that. You know, there'd be like something happening. Energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and when Jesus offers us peace, he doesn't offer us peace like the world gives. The world gives us peace that's kind of, you know, it's like based on the deceitfulness of sin, whereas his peace is different. His Mm -hmm. peace destroys that bond with sin, destroys that controlling authority over our lives. Mm -hmm which that is not what the world offers us. Jesus offers us a peace that cannot be shaken, a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Yeah, I like the idea of um I like the idea of the energy behind shalom. The blessing. Oh yeah, yeah. Shalom, 
and you don't even know I just blessed you. There it was. Exactly, <laughs> with all of that, you know, and that you you basically break the chaos off this person's life in their home. May your home have shalom. Mm. It's such a, I mean, sometimes when I'm, I'm, I want to bless someone, I say, Lord, Jesus' name, bless them with shalom. It covers a multitude of wonderful things. I'm blessing them with wellness, completeness. I'm blessing them with to prosper, to be victorious. <laughs> I mean, it goes on and on and on, you know. It's awesome. It's a great, great way to, uh, a great way to bless people and and use it but think about it every time you say shalom think about what that word the the hugeness of it and the impact so that when you use it you know it has some semblance of meaning that generates all of that energy in you and life and whatever so so one of the things Rochelle said and I completely agree is that there is a lot of chaos in our world right now yeah a lot and i don't expect that to slow down one bit Mm -mm. um and i think it produces a high level of anxiety in a lot of folks i mean i think anxiety that's what it's do that's what its job is yeah if you don't feel anxiety from chaos it's like you're not paying attention (laughs) like i'm not saying allow that to happen but i'm saying like chaos's job is to cause us to <gasps> and peace is the antithesis it's like so you have this this increase in chaos this spike in anxiety in folks and i think a lot of folks are looking for quote unquote peace and i put it in quotes because i think what they're looking for is is what they would call things to calm down, mm-hmm. right? They just want to be able to breathe and not have a racing heart and not have this... Elephant on their chest. Yeah, mm-hmm. not have that. So they're they're looking for... There's, It's causing... It's very interesting. It's a dichotomy, right? It's all of this chaos increasing and all of the anxiety spiking. They're looking for peace. The challenge is, is peace numbness? Yeah, so you find oh, yeah. drugs, or, addictions, all kinds yeah. of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. they're looking for peace. Mm-hmm. They, they know what they're looking for, and they're trying to find it. Honestly, peace, I believe peace is a person. Amen. Of course. Yeah, because um, peace as the world gives is numbness. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and the numbness makes people say things like, whatever. Who cares? I'm at peace with it. Like whatever. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to get involved. I'm I'm gonna. I, I, I'm gonna hide. I, honestly, there's a certain degree that I, I and I'm talking about myself, right? Mm-hmm. I'm I haven't watched TV in years. Because I was just like, yeah, I, I'm not interested in this right now. It just it only angst you up increased my anxiety levels, or I, I find myself starting to get fearful or I'd find my stuff. Uh, I often find myself getting angry and mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I, I turn it off. I don't need to let that in. Yeah. That's not going to lead me to a place of peace or to the person of peace. Correct. Well, I heard this years ago that don't allow anyone else's sin or anyone else's stuff to disturb your peace. Right. If news disturbs your peace, you cut it off, you know? Um, anything that disturbs your peace, because if it peace is a person, like we're saying, it's the greatest umpire of anything right. that we do, you know? It is more powerful than the darkness. It Absolutely. will always be more powerful. And so I have tried to step away from the chaos at times in my life, and I found that I experience the peace of God or the person of peace, Jesus, most when I'm in the midst of the chaos. And that light, that light of God is shining in the darkness so brightly. It's like you need that contrast to be like, wow, there is a huge difference here of what you said, Kat. The world offers us a peace that is numbing. Like, I mean, think of suicide. People don't k- kill themselves. They kill themselves because they just want peace. 
They just want peace so bad. They want the chaos, the death, the horror, the, all the pain to stop. And, and yet that leads them to death. And, you know, right now on TikTok and Instagram and social media in general, it is so much about bombarding and, and um, this interchange of needing that endorphin fix real quick to keep you from dealing with the chaos around you or the world. And yet the number one on TikTok for people that make money on TikTok right now is the people who are able to de-stress people. People are not able to sleep right now. They're taking substances and things like that. But the number one, millions of people in our country right now cannot go to sleep every night until they go on TikTok and listen to somebody in a microphone making pop sounds. <laughs> Whatever that is, this is a real phenomena. Like it is, it's been going on for years, huh. but it's now the number one category on TikTok is this um, audio sensory therapy where people cannot rest. They cannot find peace. They cannot turn their brain off. So much has been poured in and it's so loud. They cannot find shalom. They cannot find that peace that they're looking for something to just tickle their ears enough so they can fall asleep and turn off for a minute. That's hmm. so I'm going to loud. I'm going to take what you're saying and apply it to kind of a different, almost a metaphor, right? Right. We're called to be light in dark places. Okay. Nice. We're called to be peace in chaotic places. We are peace if Christ is yeah. in me and I'm in him. We need to, to your point, radiate that lightness or that peace mm -hmm. so that others will be like, wait, I want that. How, how are you? And the unfortunate reality is it, I, I see, unfortunately, too much anger, too much anger. And, yeah. and even in me, I, I see something that I would think, yeah, <laughs> that's wrong, and it makes me angry. Well, what I need to do is I need to stay in that peace when I see that and point out what's not right and not, what's not wrong. You what's can, wrong? You can be angry and stay in the place of peace. Look at Jesus yes. when he cleansed the temple. Yeah. yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. But you're right. It's 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 really more the attitude that you go into it with, you know, righteous anger. But we have to be careful with that one, too. I think what you're describing, if you think about it, Kat started with it, about the peace that's not of this world. Mm -hmm. You know, the peace of God is supernatural rest in the midst of conflict. Right. It's not absence from that's conflict, right. yep. but supernatural rest in the midst of conflict. And I think that's and we're what y'all are talking about. So much yeah. this generation, this time, we are being trained very quickly. Even though sometimes it feels slow, sometimes it feels slow and it's very quick. Sometimes it just feels like wow, it is spinning out of control and it's not going to stop. And we're being trained up for such a time as this to know how to be so connected to the source, the true peace, who is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that we are we are unshaken and not tossed to and fro in the sea. You know, that's maturity. That's knowing your identity like we've talked about. That is our ultimate maturity. That's where we want to be. Well, I'm, we kind of talked about this last episode, right, is we can manufacture our own victory. We can manufacture our own peace. But what we really want is his peace in us on display as a fragrance. Yes. Right? That's mm -hmm. going to be the what's power of going God. to attract people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you had mentioned it early on, Rochelle, that right, that peace is powerful. Yes. It is. It's not it's not numb. It's not numb at all, right? I'm if you the list of stuff that David started us off with the definition of peace I mean, there's wonderful words in there that are not slumbering. That's right. Think of the universal language of mathematics or music. Mathematics is a <clears throat> universal language because there's order. Mm -hmm. Music is a universal language because it brings peace. Um, you know, musical therapy and things like that. They've seen that these musical waves can bring, take away chaos from actual uh, physics you know, there's there's power in that piece, and it's it manifests even physically. I I find that fascinating. Mm -hmm. So, 
I'm back to having made peace through the blood on his cross. So what Christ did for us was made peace. Mm -hmm. He made peace between man slash woman and God. Yes. Right? So that we can now boldly, boldly Come behind the approach veil. him, mm -hmm. approach God, without fear of retaliation, retribution, punishment, judgments, right? Mm -hmm. We can come boldly before him to receive his mercy and grace in time of need, mm -hmm. which is exactly, if you think about what we just all spent this time talking about, exactly what the world needs now. Not spikes in anxiety, but mercy and grace mm -hmm. in their time of need. Yeah. Yeah, the wall of hostility between men and men and between God and man was so thick for all, like so thousands of years, you know, all this time. And we live in an age where that wall of hostility has been torn literally to pieces. There's no longer Jew nor Greek, male nor female. Clearly, we have men and women in this room. We have Jews and Gentiles in this room. But the wall of hostility that separated us, mm -hmm. the wall of hostility that made it so that if you were not in this certain place, born in this certain family, there was no way for you to know the living God. Or there was a way, but you'd have to find your way. Now that hostility is gone. It is an open door for all, and you can come freely. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter how much you're stuck in that thing, no matter what you think of yourself, there is a way. I, l I love Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of this good news be about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. There's no longer a, a different way for different people. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's good. In Isaiah 26, uh, it says, you will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Amen. We want to just bless you in Jesus' name with shalom. Yes. May He, your life be filled with shalom, your household, wherever you step your feet. May you experience shalom. Mm -hmm. 